I partner with our uh, sales folks, our marketing folks every day to help develop custom measurement solutions, really for our advertiser and agency partners. So, you know, I always tell our sales folks, I would love to chat more and more with our advertisers, our marketers directly to really hear straight from the source, what are the challenges that they're facing every day? Where do they see measurement currently? And what are the types of areas that they want to uh, really see growth and improvement in? So uh, this is sort of the trifecta for me today. We have three advertisers uh, here with us today representing an array of industries. Uh, we have Esohe Omori, the VP of US Digital Media for L'Oreal. We have David Grunberg, SVP of Advertising and Marketing for Citi, and Ben Versch, uh, the Director of Media at Pfizer. So, uh, so I'm really excited for you guys uh, to be here today. Uh, let's just, you know, to start things off, just go around quickly and just uh, give us a quick kind of overview about your role at your organization and how measurement plays into that a bit. Sure. Um, my name is Asohe Amori, uh, as I was introduced, and I oversee digital media for the U.S. at L'Oreal. A uh, very all-encompassing role, uh, including overseeing everything from digital strategy and investment across uh, our 26 brands in all four divisions, uh, as well as digital analytics and education. Um, so we work with a team of two, and we have a lot uh, in front of us in terms of rallying the troops around this terrain of digital, um, and I'm happy to be here speaking about all of our uh, exciting new things we have going on in measurement at L'Oreal. Yes, and I'm David Grunberg. I'm with the city for 10 months. I'm a relatively, relative newcomer to this organization. My role here is Senior Vice President of uh, the media category as a strategic sourcing, which is a different sort of role than I've played in the past. But it's the goal of the organization really to bring marketing expertise into sourcing. And uh, my background has always been in marketing services. So what I'm bringing to them is really a strategic vision for how we're going to move forward in the whole media category on a global basis. And certainly measurement is key in terms of determining what strategies really are going to be winners for us moving forward and what we need to move away from. Great. Sure. Um, I've worked with Pfizer for nine years. Uh, most recently, I'm with the Pharma Group supporting uh, four of our BUs. Uh, we're, we're embedded in the marketing team supporting a number of businesses and my role uh, specifically supporting about six different businesses is having done online investment, now I've moved on to TV investment and overseeing our good practices, our CPMs, things of that nature to make sure we get the best for the marketing uh, objectives. Great. So you guys aren't necessarily in the sort of deep weeds of the research day to day as many of us are, but you recognize the value and the importance of research to your organization. Absolutely. So it's great to get your perspective. Um, a couple of times, I think, already today, this notion of the, uh, sourcing the right skill set or finding individuals that kind of bring the talent to the media measurement world um, is increasingly important, especially as we sort of move into a diverse array of platforms. Um, that we're trying to really measure and get a real handle on. Um, SOA, I know that we spoke a little bit about this earlier, um, the importance of kind of finding those individuals that can really um, have an appreciation and understanding of digital mm -hmm. and how that fits in with the sort of more traditional forms of measurement. So mm -hmm. I would imagine that's particularly important at, at L'Oreal. Very important. And first off, I'll say I'll, I have a business card for the candidate that uh, <laughs> Kerry mentioned at the beginning of his uh, intro with the four majors there. But um, it, it is very much a struggle, uh, and it's it's partially encompassed because companies um, are, are prioritizing focusing on the tool before the human resource in terms of mining the data, understanding the data, and, and the research. Um, Abinash has been quoted as there's a 90-10 rule, I think there is, where 90% should be focused on that human resource, and then 10% should be focused on the tool. Um, because there's a lot that goes into um, the skill set that's required to mine data, to understand data, and it's, it's really from a digital analytics perspective, and that can be anything from uh, pure play media to web analytics to multivariate testing to even competitive analysis to having an IT infrastructure um, that understands you know, data integration as well as you know, data translation and QA. So it's a, it's a lot that's encompassed in finding the right skill set, and I think more often than not, companies are shifting their focus to the shiny object, which is the dashboard. And you know, it's a matter of garbage in, garbage out. The dashboard only reflects what the data is that you're putting into it. So it's making sure you have the right skill set, the right infrastructure at play to be able to 
help your organization move forward and tell a more robust story through the data. And, and, and you know, we're, we're, we're challenged to find that right skill set because we're competing with the masses, the Nielsen's, the Googles, the, the big players out there to find that talent as well. Right. Have you guys um, faced similar challenges finding individuals that can kind of bring to the table all these new needs and kind of uh, measurement strengths, I guess? Well, so far I have not had the opportunity to add to staff, so actually yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the add, yeah. so I can't answer that where I am now. In the past, it's, it was always a struggle, right. and even with the uh, resources we used on the outside in terms of their ability to source the sort of talent that we were looking for to add to the uh, capabilities of the team, right. always a struggle. Okay. Um, another, another topic that came up a couple times today, I know Jack was just mentioning this before, around integrated measurement, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of really bringing together all these different platforms, putting them on a level playing field so that we can sort of more appropriately assess all of our options. And I know that there's um, a number of vendors in this space, um, Nielsen, Comscore, that are attempting to sort of develop uh, measurement systems that enable us to really look at these, the more traditional platforms, digital platforms, et cetera, in a side-by-side -side fashion. And some of those are further along than others. Uh, David, you know, how does sort of integrated measurement play into your world, and how important is that? Right, um, well, it's case? pretty critical, and kind of it's still an issue that's out there to be uh, solved for us. Yeah. Because as we are trying to do more with the same or somewhat less, the decision-making becomes much more difficult. As, you know, the audience is fractionating, that's not news, but it's only getting more mm -hmm. and more difficult to appreciate the value that each of the channels bring to the mix. And actually coming together with a uh, holistic measurement that we can look at the combined value of each of the programs we're undertaking uh, in a way in which allows us to make smarter decisions is still uh, critical for us and not where uh, we'd like it to be quite yet. You know, we're not as smart as we'd like to pretend, and when we get later into a conversation, I have a, you know, some great wishes that I'd like to <laughs> see fulfilled in my lifetime, but uh, certainly one where I can appreciate the full capture of my uh, target is a place that I'm still not able to uh, find uh, you know, peace. Yep, yep, okay. So if I could add to that. Yep. So the way we've designed our businesses, both our marketing team, our media team, about six individuals, our agencies, is integrated. So the business is set up as integrated, yet the information coming in has been siloed. So it's very exciting to hear that across the different screens, devices, there's measurement occurring. It's very exciting to hear that measurement is based on census and behavior. And, and that's the way we need to go because it needs to catch up to the way we've designed our teams. And I think, you know, someone brought up a credibility gap, a credibility issue. Um, that is the thing, because on an integrated basis, it's usually been, you know, one-off pieces, it's been um, survey-based, but if we can move that closer to, again, the behavioral, the census-based, we'll be in a lot better position to have influence. So just sort of similar to, to what I was referencing before, so, you know, there, are, there are, is a movement in the industry, of course, you know, with Nielsen and with Comscore to develop these online GRPs that it will allow us to sort of look at TV and digital in a side-by-side -side fashion. Do you think that that's a good thing, that we're sort of kind of um, almost sort of forcing a, com you know, a comparison and a juxtaposition, if you will, between you know, the sort of traditional, uh, always sort of always how we've done it kind of way of things versus yeah. maybe we're disregarding or not giving enough attention to some of the merits of digital or of emerging platforms by sort of forcing this kind of traditional approach to yeah. measurement? Yeah, I, I think um, I, I debate, we debate that is it the right thing that TV the currency of TV is now being adopted by online. The currency of print is being adopted by tablet. Um, and with all the data that's out there, is there an opportunity to do more? Um, I think it, it's an advancement to get to the, the TV and to the print currency because so much development's been done there. And, and there's been a need in the online space to bring that, that rigor, that discipline, the smarts that have gone behind decades and decades of work. But is there an opportunity to go beyond that? And I, I think that's where you talk about the integration. That's where you talk about um, what, what is the new generation using it for? Um, I think a lot of the morning stuff here has been very exciting. It gives a lot of uh, uh, happiness, pride that we're moving that direction. But it needs to be rounded out. And it needs to be adopted by um, the online space that 
they don't have it all figured out and that they do need to bring more to the table. From the online perspective, I'd imagine you have point of view on that, right? Yeah, I would add to that that, you know, to, for me, the jury is still out on whether or not the GRP model applies to online. I have yet to see any analysis where comparatively online looks good when stacked up against TV using that currency. Um, you know, GRP, it's a measure of exposure, and part of what digital allows is more depth and more rigor in terms of engagement metrics, all the way down to conversion. Um, so what I would ultimately like to see is just more accountability, more, um, you know, rigor behind traditional channel measurement. Um, but again, speaking to integration, I think that's what a holistic measurement framework would allow, uh, assuming you get to the lowest common denominator of what that KPI would look like, what right. defines success, which you know, we still have not achieved yet, but I think we have some case studies internally that we're moving towards, uh, inclusive of things like modeling that will allow us to get to that ultimate uh, factor. So maybe we're putting too much attention on kind of the age, sex, demo side of things and not enough on advertising receptivity engagement, you're saying? I would say so, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll add, to, there's a book, Digital Impact, that talks a great deal about the, the funnel and where, where, say, TV belongs in the funnel versus online. So bring that approach to it. And, but that's the extra layer of, I think, understanding the customer. So. Uh, the TV has been impression, 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 demo, a large mass of people. The online space gives you the customer, the purchase, that 80-20 that we saw before. So that is the opportunity to, how do you meld the two, a similar currency, one, maybe one currency across all media, but to the point of what is the difference and how do you bring those out so that you see the value in each one that it brings to the table. Okay. Well, could I just want to yeah, add, sure. in terms of the valuation of the contribution for each of the channels, it's kind of to the understanding of what the expectation is as you create the strategy. Mm -hmm. So even within that, if we have a measure or an expectation going in, then with the measurement coming out, mm -hmm. we have this to make the contrast. Got it, got it. And, um, that's, and that's not always clear. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, ben, you and I were speaking a bit before as well about um, the importance of measuring earned and owned media, right, in addition to paid. I mean, paid, you know, still has its challenges, right, but earned and owned is really sort of the, the new kind of, you know, not to use a hacking expression, but the wild, wild west, if you will. I mean, at Bravo, social is so important for us as we sort of measure the, the sort of popularity and the, and, the, and the kind of conversation around our programs and also to our advertising partners to understand whether they're getting buzz and conversation generated by inclusion in our programs. I will tell you that, you know, in working with a number of different social providers, I ask what I think is a fairly straightforward question uh, and I get probably five or six different answers to the same question. And it's, it's actually very unsettling as we sort of venture increasingly into this space. So from Pfizer's perspective, how are you guys tackling the earned and owned phenomenon? Yeah, I mean, we're in a highly regulated space. So we have the luxury, and a lot of our demos are older. So we have the luxury of actually watching. But I don't envy anyone in the space who has to uh, go at it and try and figure it out. I mean, we... Um, you know, we'll sponsor things, and, and we'll see that you know upwards of 20% of the traffic to what we sponsor comes from and can be attributed to social. Mm -hmm. So it's having an influence out there. So when we do our paid, how do we, there's plenty of extensions happening out there. And how do we tackle that? Frankly, we're just waiting for that right decision. And when I say waiting, I mean, we're proactively doing our listening. We're engaging all our agencies to understand what tools they have. We've experimented with the Huffington Post and things of that to see how we can influence. We've done video campaigns to see how they take off. Um, but it's a challenging space for pharma. Uh, we know it's happening out there. How do we penetrate it? How do we make it active is another question. But with, we have lots of questions, but there's very few answers right now. And David, is, do you think the, the transparency issue is, is something that's worth noting as it relates to kind of earned and owned mm. media in particular? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at uh, the magic box and try and determine what mechanisms are going into the count and appreciate that the validation necessarily isn't there or evident to us as the ones who are uh, actually investing in whatever this may be. And as a result, you know, if you compare that to a hard science where you, got, you need three other labs to <laughs> prove the valuation of the experiment, I mean, we don't have anything even close to that. So it is a concern. So sorry, if you can use this as a sort of forum to kind of message out to the folks that are in the social media space, I mean, what would you say to them? 
I mean, our brands are very active in social. Beauty inherently is very social. Uh, it, it, it provokes conversation. It, it, it leads conversation. Um, but one thing that you know, we struggle with, because uh, again, most if not all of our brands are very active on the big players and even some of the smaller ones, it, it, we struggle to get data and we struggle to get meaningful data from our partners um, outside of just hard, fast numbers. Um, you know, going back to um, the point made earlier about um, you know, getting data from providers in the form of this is how many likes or this is how many followers you may have, but then what, the, what, is, what does that mean? What does that ladder up to? Um, we get lots of traffic coming in from various social sources. Most of it's organic. So when you look at the optimization model in terms of what we're putting in from a paid, what we're putting in from an own perspective, you know, our marketing teams need to be equipped and empowered to make real-time decisions to optimize our campaigns and shift dollars from paid to own to earned if need be. Um, so my rally cry for all of our marketing teams and really just for the marketplace is just to put a lot more um, rigor behind being transparent uh, in terms of what the numbers mean and you know when we're asking these questions it's because you know not to shift budgets away in totality but it's just to empower us to make smarter decisions and, and really amplify what we're doing with our partners. Yeah, I mean, do you guys think there would be value in some sort of initiative, not unlike what the ARF had done with the neuromarketing and the sort of biometric space with their neuro standards committee, to really try to apply some practices and standards around measurement in the space that is, you know, much like social media and emerging media research, I think neuromarketing, also there's, you know, uh, dozens of companies that purport to do sort of work in this space and as a media company and assuredly as an advertiser you know it's a bit overwhelming to really kind of reconcile what those differences are do you think that there would be some value in getting an industry like initiative to help us you know better sort of migrate through the the, the world of social media and, and sort of new research in that space uh, I'll take that sure <laughs> um, so we're paid members at MRC um, we believe in that process that rigor the peer review that happens and uh, there is value to that um, and and I think knowing that you have colleagues and an industry behind something uh, is always helpful because to your point there's lots of things happening out there there's a ton of venture money being invested in the new um, and the ability to go through that and actually make it known and credible. So within the research community, it's probably well known, the rigors and all that, but outside of that, and those that came calling on marketers, on the youth of the agency, what have you, um, having a filter to that is, would be very helpful. Great. Uh, a, t a topic that I don't think we've touched on just yet in the morning sessions, but I'm sure we'll be hearing a ton about uh, over the next couple of days at some of the key issue forums, is, uh, is, this, is this sort of phenomenon of multi-screening and simultaneous usage of media and of platforms, right? I mean, we heard a lot about uh, platform usage, but I think what's really becoming increasingly prominent is that consumers are more and more leveraging multiple media at the same time. There was a recent IAB report that came out that said 63% of live TV viewers uh, and 66% of DVR TV viewers said that they use another device at least once the last time they watch television, then that includes computers, tablets, and smartphones. Um, so are we sort of manufacturing, uh, you know, a consumer base of, of ADD, you know, <laughs> folks, or are we, are, are, are these platforms really kind of benefiting us in some fashion, right? Or are we just causing people to be increasingly distracted across, across, the, across the media spectrum? I would say it, it, it really boils down to how it is done and the execution and what the payoff is for the consumer. It's not just about spraying and praying and being in every device as you're trying to get their very fragmented uh, attention span. Um, but I was literally just at E3 last week and Microsoft announced Smart Glass, which is this great technology that would literally link all devices, um, iOS as well as um, their Windows properties together to allow for a more integrative and cohesive experience. Tablet, phone, TV. Um, however, again, that's not the secret sauce. That's not the answer to the solution. It really is, what is your ultimate communications objective? You know, the con again, the consumer's attention span is very fragmented. How do you deliver it across in a meaning meaningful way and make sure that there is a payoff for them? And that, to me, is what it all boils down to.
And, and measurement is probably an important part of that. Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. I think you know many questions were thrown out there, but the, to me, the one that was most important was, well, are you able to track the consumer from device to device as part of their engagement experience um, with their marketing or whatever the opportunity is? And there was crickets, of course, um, and then a lot of mutter, mutter, and oh, we'll follow up with that. Um, but I think you know what they're sitting on is something very ripe, and there is an opportunity there. But again, I think analytics and measurement and that data, uh, it's often thought of after the fact, ex post facto. So how do you bring the two together cohesively and make sure as an advertiser you're getting what you need from the onset as you build out your communication strategy on these multiple platforms? Right. And we're not there yet. Well, I was going to say that uh, in my own experience, it's both a distraction and an enhancement. It depends <laughs> on the moment of the day. So it's not, I find it be a kind of challenge as to appreciating whether or not uh, there's a great opportunity yet fully realized or whether we have to do something about the way in which our uh, ads, let's say, are on television, are actually put into programming to make it more an enhancement for the viewer so they're not looking for the distraction or to forward through it if they're doing a, uh, a DVR view. So quite frankly, uh, I'm not sure where that sits. I have to uh, uh, admit my own uh, confusion with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, a, it's a new phenomenon. So I yeah, yeah I'll just add, the, I'll play the optimist that it's an opportunity for engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and just how engaged individuals are is important. I, I think another trend we see is, you know, if you watch Super Bowl, we see that every, almost every other ad was Shazamable. And what does that mean? Like, is that a good thing, bad thing? Um, is it something we should all be doing? What can it bring to the table? So those are questions that are unanswered but would be very helpful to marketers. But see, in my opinion, at least the Shazam aspect of it, that's a utility. That's something mm -hmm. the consumer, you know, you're watching a commercial, you're intrigued, you might want to know what music is playing. Um, as part of one of the examples that was given at E3, it's you're watching Game of Thrones and there's an interactive map and there's the show and the interactive mm -hmm. map on your tablet can help guide you through the experience of the show. From an advertiser, I don't see any integration aspect in that experience because you'll mm -hmm. just be disrupting it. Um, but you know, could that really provide a more meaningful and robust platform for the user as they're watching Game of Thrones, possibly, because it's a very complex show, in my opinion. Um, but nonetheless, I, I, there's just more thought that needs to be put uh, out mm -hmm. into the marketplace in terms of what engagement could be driven on these multiple devices. Um, yeah, and, and surely we'll, we'll hear more about that over the next couple of days. Um, and I know, again, at Bravo, it's, it's a very sort of top of mind issue for us as well as, you know, we continue to kind of push into the digital and mobile and emerging space. And then obviously the measurement of it needs to follow suit. And that's where, that's where the challenge and the fun, I guess, is. Um, I, I was actually, before this session, uh, I was, I was uh, spending a little time watching some of the YouTube clips of the sessions that we had last year, which are available on YouTube. They only have about... 99 views or so, guys, so I think that you guys can help ramp it up a bit. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, but one of the sessions last year, there was a similar session of executives and thought leaders that were talking about measurement, um, you know, in some cases from the advertiser perspective, and there was some discussion about whether or not there's, you know, whether we should all sort of rally together and create, you know, and, and focus our efforts and double down on kind of a common currency, right, versus, you know, and really partner together to kind of get it right and in and, and a sort of, in a sort of, um, you know, straightforward and uh, agreed upon standardized way. And then there was other sort of folks on the panel that said, no, you know, we all are going to continue to need our proprietary measurement, our own individual way of doing things. So do you guys think that there is value in, uh, in this sort of, in focusing as an industry on kind of imp improving our, our, our common currencies? Or do you still think that proprietary measurement and doing things in a sort of category or client specific way is, is really where we should be um, putting our attention? Uh, I'll just say you got to do what's right for the business. Yeah. So I think that it, it always require a um, a mix of both the syndicated, the custom. Um, you know, the question is what what makes now the right time to do it? I mean, I'm sure this has debated been debated for years. You know, TV, radio, print, newspaper. I mean, go back and back. But um, I think from our perspective. Um, you know, we don't want to get it watered down. There's just so much opportunity now to really drill in on what the customer, the consumer wants. Um, and it's time to get excited about that. I think a lot of folks are. And uh, I think it's a, it's a wonderful time to be looking deeper than trying to flatten it for everybody. 
Uh, okay, so we just have a, a minute or so left. So I just wanted to go around the room and again, in sort of the spirit of the other sessions, uh, we wanted to sort of talk about what you guys would identify as, you know, if you could wave the magic wand and kind of identify, uh, you know, one kind of change or one sort of improvement in the measurement or research space, what would it be if you could kind of snap your fingers and make something happen um, right now? Honestly, it would be that anything that L'Oreal is putting into the market would be measurable, actionable, and trackable. Uh, but again, it goes back to the brief. It goes back to setting those objectives up front um, and that everything that you're putting into this sort of channel mix is identified as those three var variables for sure. My wish is really for this uh, wonderful dashboard that's going to allow us to take <laughs> our traditional and our digital or non-traditional uh, channels put them together and allow us to do this functional dialing to get ourselves into a place where we're, when we're developing our strategies, really to start out in a more perhaps realistic spot in a place where we are more likely to fulfill expectations because we're starting out in a greater reality, if you will. And yet the development of that as a device in itself is, is uh, I don't know how far away, a year away, two years away? But that would be a great Eleven, wish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, someone was said this morning, census-based, behavioral-based, across all platforms. Um, I think there's a lot of exciting work being done in the digital space and keep pushing it. Um, that, that's gone beyond, say, just some simple panels, but really to understand who's using it and uh, just keep pushing. Don't stop. Great. All right, well, thank you guys very thank much. You. I'm sure thank everyone you. here appreciates um, the perspective of the marketers.